there is a mutation in 3, 5 exonuclease activity of the DNA polymerase. So, you should remember that the pol 1, the DNA polymerase pol 1, it is a 3, 5 exonuclease activity. What is the purpose served by this 3, 5 exonuclease? It is a proofreading function. It will be repairing the damaged DNA and uh, uh, it is not for replication, but it will be replacing the RNA primers in the lagging strand synthesis. So that is the purpose of pole 1, 3, 5 exonuclease activity is what you need to remember. DNA, DNA replication, DNA structure. <coughs> Very high yield topic. If you have done this question wrong, <coughs> today only you should go back, evening you should review. And there are about 60 questions in the UMedico topic quiz on DNA. Play that game until, until your level increased and you are winning the games on your opponents. That is how you should quickly, quickly, quickly recognize where I am going wrong and then you need to increase your level of your score and then that is how you should win the exam. 10 months after starting the procaramide therapy, patient develops SLE. So, drug induced SLE is much more common in those who are of the slow acetylated type of a phenotype. That is how the pharmacogenetics act is what you need to remember. 83 year old has echinacea, rigidity and tremor. So what is this because of? Parkinsonism is because of the low dopamine. The anti-dopaminergic effect of the antipsychotics will lead to drug induced Parkinsonism is what you need to remember. 23 year old has a pneumocystis carinii and uh, started on trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. So how does it basically act? It acts as an inhibitor of the dihydrofolate reductase is what you need to remember. 62 year old comes with the tenderness of the right great toe, classically metatarso phalangeal joint of the great toe with a high uric acid level means it is gout. So typically uric acid levels will be high. 62 year old treated with cisplatin, how does cisplatin basically act? It acts on the DNA, so it basically ligands with the DNA, so that is how the cisplatin acts. So you must know different classes of the antineoplastic drugs. What is their mechanism of action? Favorite topic of the examiner for the NEET PG. And you have to, if you have gone this question wrong, you have to revise, revise and revise to make that uh, um, until you become uh, your level, you medical skill point level happens to increase on the you medical app. 18 year old woman comes to the physician because of the nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain and on the wet mount of the vaginal discharge you can find the presence of the trichomonas as a motile organism. So, metronidazole typically lead to disulfiram like reaction if you are taking metronidazole and also taking uh, the red wine is what you need to remember. 20 year old has taken 30 tablets of an unknown drug and uh, his liver is bombed. So, what tablet could it that be? So, acetaminophen toxicity lead to development of the liver injury and a hepatic failure is what you need to remember. 42 year old, he has got a one hour history of severe abdominal pain, hypotension, bradycardia, sweating and uh, difficulty breathing due to his intense bronchospasm. So, these are all the features of the organophosphor poisoning. Organophosphor lead to cholinomimatic excess. So, excessive acetylcholine will lead to severe bronchospasm. So, isofluorophate is that OP organophosphor that you are able to see here. 35 year old is taking omeprazole. Omeprazole is the one which is a proton pump inhibitor which inhibits the H plus K plus ATPase activity as all of you know. A 40 year old comes with hypertension and you have given, if you give which drug that will decrease the sympathetic outflow and uh, can be able to uh, act as a antihypertension. Clonidine like agents, clonidine like agents are used which are basically alpha 2 adrenergic agonists which act centrally 
and decrease the sympathetic outflow and lead to release of vasoconstriction and lead to vasodilatation. So, adrenergic agonists are divided into direct acting, mixed acting. In the direct acting, you have selective like phenylephrine, which acts on alpha 1. Alpha 1 stimulation lead to vasoconstriction. So, phenylephrine lead to vasoconstriction and rises BP. Clonidine is alpha 2 agonist. Alpha 2 agonism will lead to the development of um, um, inhibition of the sympathetic outflow. And inhibition of the sympathetic outflow will lead to the vasodilatation. Then dobutamine is beta 1 agonist and terbutaline is beta 2 agonist. Beta 2 agonism will lead to bronchodilatation. Hence, terbutaline is used as a bronchodilator as an asthma drug. Non selective include isoproteinol and uh, which acts on beta 1, beta 2. Epinephrine acts on alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2. And norepinephrine acts on alpha 1, alpha 2, and beta 1, but not beta 2. And uh, oxymetallocene acts on the alpha 1 and alpha 2 is what you need to remember. Then you have mixed acting, uh, which is ephedrine, both direct and indirect. So if you happen to give clonidine like drug, it will go and act on the alpha 2 receptor. When alpha 2 receptor is stimulated, it will give a negative feedback and it will decrease the uh, release of norepinephrine. Normally, norepinephrine should uh, release. It should act on the alpha 1 receptor on the vessel and that should cause the vessel to constrict. But if there is a decreased norepinephrine release because of this negative feedback, then that lead to vasodilatation and that is how the clonidine acts as an antihypertensive. I will summarize. Clonidine acts on alpha 1 receptor, alpha, uh, sorry, alpha 2 receptor, Alpha 2 receptor is presynaptic, alpha 1 is postsynaptic. So, when alpha 2 receptor, which is presynaptic, is stimulated, it will give a negative feedback, decrease the sympathetic outflow, and decrease the stimulation of alpha 1. And uh, decreased alpha 1 stimulation lead to release of vasoconstriction and lead to vasodilatation. And that is how clonidine acts like a vasodilator and antihypertensive is what you need to basically remember.